Hello everyone and welcome back to PM Studios C Sharp Programming Tutorials number 5 today and we are going to be going over while loops and adding the final touches to our program that we've been working with for the last two tutorials. Um, this will be the final tutorial working with this same program so I bet you guys are excited to get to move on and um, start touching base with a different program. So as you can see, I've already brought in all of the code that we left off with on our last tutorial, uh, including the console.reads. And let's go ahead and get started here. Um, there's really not much to uh, go into. So uh, we do have a couple more uh, variables that we're going to want to add into this equation. So the first one is going to be a character va variable, or char. We're going to do do again. We're not going to assign anything to it yet. And then we're going to create two Boolean variables. And we're going to call them repeat1 equals true. And repeat2 equals true. And just in case I haven't mentioned it in previous tutorials, uh, you are more than welcome to... Actually, I don't want to do char equals to again. I want char do again. Just in case I haven't mentioned this in previous uh, tutorials, you can, uh, by all means, put all of these different variables on their own independent lines. So you can do string, for, string first name, string last name, string full name, string how feel, uh, character do again, bull repeat one, bull repeat two. But it's easier and it saves space and makes your code easier to read if you just put them all on one line so that they can go, okay, here's your list of strings, here's your list of characters, here's your list of booleans. If we had integers, they could go, here's your list of integers, yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. So that's the whole reason why I do it the way I do it. And we can go while, and we're going to go repeat one equals true. And we're going to put an in a brace here, and we're going to scroll all the way down to the very bottom of our code, and then put another return, and put another brace, and then we're going to scroll all the way back up, highlighting everything within the while loop constraints, and we're going to hit our tab button. And as you can see, that automatically indents it, one tab work, or two spaces, for those of you who would like to know that. But just keep in mind that, that highlight everything and push the button will only work with tab. If you highlight everything and push backspace, it will delete everything. <laughs> and if you push highlight, if you highlight everything and push space, it'll delete everything and replace it with a space. So be very careful with what you do with that, and keep in mind that it only works with uh, it only works with tab. So moving on, we're going to scroll down just a little bit, and this right here, this whole area right here, is of great concern to me. Because even though you can, whoops, if I could get my scroll bar, even though you can get it to function properly, it's not robust. Um, if you enter the wrong variable, it tells you it can't process it, and then it kills the program. So the b easiest way to do this, um, especially for beginners, would be to put in a while loop, which would be while, and this is where the second repeat comes in. So repeat 2 equals equals true. And I believe I might have botched that up at the very top. Yes, I did. So, again, you got to be really careful of that, because right there I was assigning repeat 1 to true, as opposed to comparing it. So while repeat 2 equals equals true, and we're going to hit and put our braces again, um, and we're going to bring them down just to the very bottom of this, and then we're going to highlight everything within it. And let me just... indent that, and then we're good to go. And as you can see, the more we add on to it, the more layers the uh, the program gets. So now we're on to layer 7, or layer 6, I believe it is. Well, yeah, layer 7 because of these indents. So uh, pr programming and the indentation on all of the layers of the code really do help for the readability because it keeps everything nice, aligned, and justified so that you can see where things start and where things end, and it's it's overall easier to read. And those are the two or three key things that you're trying to go for is readability and um, robustness and basically the, the overall efficiency of the code, um, which requires the problem-solving elements that I have been speaking of before. So we're going to go ahead and replace these items right here, the console.reads, with uh, repeat statements so that we can adjust this. And we're going to go repeat 2, because that's the loop that we're looking for, equals false. 
All right, so basically what happens is if they do enter yes, yes, or yes, any of the three uh, capitalizations that we allowed, it will change repeat2 to false, which will allow the program to move on. Same thing with this one, so repeat2 equals false. And you could have by all means copied that, but with something so short, it's really more time consuming than it is anything else. And we can go ahead and erase this line because we're going to be implementing some other code to carry on because we do still have that while loop up here at the top. So we're going to go ahead and follow that down. And as you can see, we can just go ahead and... And if you do ever get confused with your lines of code, you can put your cursor on the back side of any of the braces and it'll highlight the two, uh, two braces that you you're currently working with. So this would be the one that you'd want to enter after. And then inside of this, we would go console dot right line. And would you like to run this program a second time? And then Y or N. And after this, you could easily, um, very easily, uh, alter the the codes up here so that it's not so confusing and it doesn't have all this room for error because it'd either be Y for yes or anything else for cancel the program. Um, it doesn't necessarily work in all cases but for some of them, especially uh, uh, system repeats, it works beautifully. So we can implement that do again variable that we brought in and what we're going to do equals convert dot two character and then inside the parentheses we're going to do console dot read line and as you can see this is um, we're not actually doing a boolean value and then we actually don't want to put anything in there so again with the overloads that I had mentioned earlier uh, this would be overload number one is what it was saying although I don't believe read lines are a boolean value because uh, they return something other than true and false anyways so basically what's going on right here is that since console.read and console.read line only return string elements if you want to uh, pick up any other variable besides a string element from the user you need to convert them to whatever you want to work with. Alternatively, you could use strings, but that does complicate things in a lot of senses. So, since we need a yes or a no and nothing else, what we're going to do is we're going to have it read the string and then immediately convert it to the character so that we can save that memory space um, for other processes while at the same time keeping it uh, as simple as possible. So, uh, once we do that, we're going to I don't know why to that. We're going to do if do again equals equals and then this is why it simplifies things because there's only two different variables. There's lowercase and capital. So and the the two vertical bars is or as I stated in the previous one. I don't believe I went over that in too much depth, but let's go ahead and close that. Ah, that's why. And again, the reason why it's giving me errors here is because characters are outlined with apostrophes, whereas strings are outlined with quotes. So if you're working with character values, just remember, single quotes. And if you're working with strings, double quotes. Characters are shorter than strings, naturally. So that's the easy way to remember it. And we can go repeat 1 equals true, because that would state that they want to go through the program again. And then we can go else, because if we're doing anything other than yeses, we need to repeat one equals false, terminate the program. So let's go ahead and scan back up and then look at what we're doing. And I will spend this moment to go over the comparison operators a little bit more. Of course, the only two you, uh, you recognize as of right now are the absolute equals, which is the equals comparison, and the or comparison. Now, if we wanted to do if, do again equals lowercase y and uppercase y, we do the two ampersands here like that, or alternatively, we could go if do again does not equal 
lowercase y, or equals uppercase y, then we continued on, or that's greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, greater than, less than, and then also we have, um, let me see, what else could we do? I believe that's about it. So I'm going to put that back to equals equals. And I believe those are all the essential basics one, basic ones. And of course, we've got the, the minus and the addition and all that, but those are mathematical operators. Um, so those are the essential ones that you'll need uh, that will come in handy in everyday life. We're going to go ahead and run this program now. We can go ahead and check our error box right here to make sure that there are no errors. And when we see that there aren't, we can run the program. It's going to say, please enter your first name. This is all first tutorial stuff. It's going to say, how am I doing? Yes, I'm doing great. And it's going to say, that's wonderful, so am I. Would you like to run this program a second time? Yes. And here we're going to start uh, testing all of the different uh, robustness that we put into the code. So, ah, I forgot. And that's why you always want to run the test, is because you forget things. Um, right here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to repeat to equals true. I know we assigned repeat 2 to true up here, but what happens is is the only way repeat 1 can turn to false is when you're terminating the program permanently. So it always stays true unless you're terminating the program. Whereas repeat 2, in order to continue on through the program, it has to get turned to false. But nowhere in the code is it turned back to true. So if you did repeat the code, it's going to skip over that after the first time because it's still false. So we can just automatically set that to, uh, to true at the very beginning of the, the repeat loop, and that'll solve that issue. So we can continue riz, and then yes, it's going to ask me if I want to do it a second time. And then it's going to continue to ask me which is good, because now we want to move on here and say I just enter Q. It's going to say I'm not programmed to answer that response, or I'm, I'm not programmed to interpret that response. And it's, we're going to have to continue on. We could do that. And it's going to continue to say that we're not entering anything right until we either go yes or no. And we're going to do no. It's going to terminate the program just the way it was written. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. As for that, I will see you next tutorial.